To avoid looking at all this long tail data, we can use the xlim parameter inside of qplot. This parameter takes a vector where we have the start position and the ending position of our axes. And in our case, we want to examine fringe counts less than 1,000. Running the code, I can see that I have my plot with friend counts less than 1,000. Now, there is another way to create the same plot. Here, I won't use the xlim parameter. Instead, I'm going to add a layer. I use limits instead of xlim as the parameter inside of here, since I know this adjustment is already for the x-axis. That's why it's called scale x continuous. There's also a counterpart for the y-axis called scale y continuous. One of the neat concepts of ggplot is that you can build up your plot in layers. We're going to discuss layers later in this lesson, but for now, I'm going to keep using the qplot syntax. So far, we've learned how to create histograms, how to facet them, and how to adjust our axes. But up until now, all of our histograms have had a default setting. We've been getting this error message for a while about the bin width defaulting to range over 30. It turns out we can actually set the bin width ourselves to reveal interesting trends in the data. Let's hear what happened during Moore's investigation when she altered the bandwidth of her histogram.